Chapter 8, Two Down When Greg got to Mr. Z's room after school on Thursday, no one else was there. He sat at a desk in the front row and looked over at the clock. It was already 3.05. Greg thought, six minutes. If he's not here in six minutes, I'm going to soccer. A minute later, Mara burst into the room. Sorry, I know I'm late, but I... Then she saw only Greg was in there. She stopped and thought... Oh, she stopped and then walked to the front of the room. I thought I was late. You are late, said Greg. He jerked a thumb towards Mr. Z's desk. Just not as late as he is. Mara sat down a few seats away and turned to look out the window. A minute went by. The empty school felt too quiet to Greg. He said, um, so what's he want us to say anyway? Without turning her head, Mara said, three guesses. Right, said Greg. Then he remembered what Mara had said about his comic book. It was okay, but... Greg wanted Mara to finish that sentence. Then he thought, what do I care? Which... But what do I care what she thinks? But after another minute of silence, his curiosity won out. Still, he didn't want Mara to think that he actually cared about what she thought. Then he hit on a way to bring up the subject. Greg said, I read your unicorn book. It was good for what it is. Mara turned and faced him, arching one eye of her pale eyebrows. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, said Greg. It's not really my kind of story. That's all. You know, princesses and unicorns. I like comic books, and your book isn't a comic. So why did you read it? Greg shrugged. It was the only reading material I had in the nurse's office. I was bored. How come you read my story? Mara tossed her head. Same reason. There wasn't anything better to do in math. But you bought a copy of mine, and you said it was good, right? Yeah, Mara admitted, but... That's what Greg had been waiting for. But what? What did you not like about it? Mara was quiet a moment, and when she spoke, Greg saw she was choosing her words carefully. Well, it's sort of like what you said about my book, about it not being your kind of story. See, I know you want to sell a lot of copies, Greg interrupted, because you think I'm a greedy little money grubber, right? Mara's eyes flashed. Can you just listen? Greg nodded, and Mara continued. I liked the story, and I liked the artwork, too, but I don't think many other girls would. And since half the kids at our school are girls, if you write boy stories, you're only going to sell half as many books as you could. Greg pretended to look shocked, and then shook a finger at Mara. Boy stories? I'm going to tell Mrs. Sandburn what you said. Mrs. Sandburn was a social studies teacher, and she talked a lot about equal rights for women and girls. She got furious whenever someone suggested that men and women or boys and girls should be treated differently. Mara said, don't be dumb. I'm not talking about equal rights. I'm talking about what girls like and boys. And no matter what Mrs. Stamborn says, most boys don't pick up stories about princesses and most girls don't pick up stories about cavemen with spears. As Mara finished that sentence, Mr. Z walked in. Cavemen with spears? Are you two calling each other names again? Mara and Greg shook their heads and Mrs. Mr. Z said, Good. I was delayed in the office. I was afraid I'd get here and find you two wrestling on the floor or throwing chairs at each other. But you're not name-calling and not fighting. Looks like progress. He pulled a front row desk forward a few feet, uh, turned it around, and sat midway between them. Mr. Z had been planning what he would say to Greg and Mara all afternoon. He already knew exactly where he wanted this meeting to end up, but he was prepared to take this take his time getting there. In his mind, it was like a math problem. He would add right ideas, subtract wrong ones, divide fuzzy thinking by pure logic, and then he and the children would nod and smile at each other as peace and understanding multiplied itself. Looking first into Mara's face and then Greg's, Mr. Z said, now, please tell me precisely what started that mess during sixth period. Greg, you first. Greg took a deep breath and then let it out slowly. Well, it really started at the end of lunch period. That's when I found out Mara was selling little books like mine, ripping me off. I did not rip you off. Mara, Mr. Z raised a warning finger. Quiet, your turn is coming. Mara nodded, but kept on talking. He just said a minute ago that my story is nothing like his. Yeah, said Greg, his voice raised, but it's still a mini book, right? Admit it, you ripped me off. Quiet, both of you. Mr. Z was not used to raising his voice. I'm not going to put up with this. If you two can't talk this out, 
with me, then I'll turn the whole matter, matter over to Mrs. Davenport and your parents. He looked for Mara he looked from Mara to Greg and then back again. Is that clear? Now I asked Greg to speak first. Mara, not another word. Turning to Greg, he said, So you found out Mara had these booklets for sale, and you got mad. Anything else? Well, Greg said, just that it didn't seem fair. It was my idea. So yeah, I got mad, and I came to class that way, and you saw the rest, and that is, that's all. Mr. Z nodded and said to Greg, Okay, now it's your turn to listen. Not one word. Turning to Mara, he said, Let's hear your side. Mara shrugged. There's not much to tell. I mean, what did I do? I was sitting there here in class, and he comes blasting in and started shouting and throwing stuff in my face, and me hitting him. That was an accident. He said so himself, to the nurse. So I didn't do anything. Pfft. Greg pushed a puff of air between his lips. Not a word, but close enough to draw a glare from the math teacher. Mr. Z turned back to Mara. Show me your little book. Do you have one? Mara zipped a pocket on the front of her backpack and pulled out a copy of The Lost Unicorn and handed it to Mr. Z. He quickly turned the page, scanning the text and looking at the picture. Then turning to Greg, he asked, how about yours? Greg took a copy from his pencil case and handed it over. Again, Mr. Z did a skim. Looking up from Creon's face to Greg's, he said, So even though these are clearly very different items, you're still mad that Mara did something similar, right? Use the same idea. Greg nodded. Right, my idea. Looking Greg in the eye, Mr. Z said, So you agree with me that a little book with pictures is an idea? Yeah, said Greg. Of course, like I said, it was my idea. Mr. Greg shook his head. That's not what I said. I said, a little book with pictures is an idea. Not that it's your idea. Then holding up both mini books between his thumbs and index finger, he said, These two different things are still just one idea, right? Greg nodded. Right. And the idea was mine first. Mr. Z leaned forward. But the thing about a true idea is that no one can really own it. Even the person who uses it first. In mathematics, the... Some ones were the first to use the idea of place value over 5,000 years ago, but they do not own that idea. And when you sit here in my room adding large numbers and carrying tens or hundreds over into the next place column, does the Sumerans come and run running into the room saying, hey, quit it, that's my idea? Greg didn't answer. He lowered his eyes and stared at a smear of green gum on the floor. Mr. Z went on. Now, if Mara had used your characters, this Creon guy, or if she had made her drawings look just like yours, then I think you'd have more reason to be upset. But she didn't do that. She used an old idea, a small book, in her own way. And yes, she might have seen you do it first. But that's the way ideas work. They spread. So I don't think you should be mad at Mara. If anything, you should be flattered. Someone thought the way you used an old idea was so new and interesting that she wanted to try it out for herself. Mr. Z paused. Greg was looking down at his feet, studying his sneakers. He decided to just let Mr. Frizzyhead talk himself out. Why argue? The sooner the guy finished yakking, the sooner I could leave. he could leave for soccer practice. Look at me, Greg. Greg tipped his head back. He flicked his eyes to the teacher's face and then back to the floor. The math teacher said, Is any of this making sense to you? Greg shrugged. Sure, I guess so. Then, I think all of this adds up to one thing. Mr. Z paused, waiting for Greg to look him in the face. It didn't happen, so he said, Greg, you need to apologize to Mara. Greg's head jerked up. Apologize? Me? No. No way. Mara knew how stubborn Greg was, and she'd liked the talk they'd been having before the teacher had arrived. She quickly said, It's okay, Mr. Z. He doesn't have to apologize. Mr. Z said, yes, he does. First, he asked to apologize to you. Then he asked to apologize to me for making a huge disturbance in my room and wasting precious class time. And all because of a comic book. Greg felt the fury raise, rising in his chest. He wanted to tip his head back and howl like, a, like Creon. He wanted to get up close to this man, this man's huge nose, and shout, I'm the guy with the black eye here. I'm the one who has the idea ripped off. Apologize? That's so stupid. No, actually, you're stupid. Greg felt his face getting red, felt his heart pounding, 
And then, for a second time in the day, Greg felt his nose began to bleed, begin to bleed. Only this time, it was a real gusher. Blood streamed out of his left nostril, over his lips, and dripped off his chin, splattering his shirt and the desk. Mr. Z put one hand over his mouth with the other. He pointed a shaky finger, his eyes wide. Oh, oh, your nose, it's, it's... He couldn't say the B word. Mr. Z's face went pale as paper. Sweat stood out across, or stood out on his forehead, and behind the hand still covering his mouth. His breath came in gasps. Earlier, Greg had no hadn't noticed Mr. Z's reaction to the blood. This time, he couldn't miss it, and he decided to enjoy it. Greg, Greg leaned forward and nodded at Mr. Z, making no effort to stop the flow. Yes, my nose is bloody, very bloody. It's bleeding, and blood is getting all over the place. Bloody, bloody, blood. Mr. Z turned away, almost throwing up. Greg, Mara snapped, stop it. That's mean. She'd already grabbed the tissues from the teacher's desk. Here. And she pushed the box into Greg's hands. Turning to Mr. Z, she said, Can I get you something? Some water? Mr. Z shook, it, shook his head. I just need to lie down. And with Mara to steady him, he eased out of his desk and onto the floor, flat on his back, eyes closed. Now you, Mara said to Greg, sit on the floor and lean forward and squeeze your nose hard. Greg followed orders but then decided he'd be more comfortable laying on the ground. Mara said, I'll get the nurse and a cold pack, two cold packs. And then she left Greg and Mr. Z um, littering the floor of room 27.